players now coming up on stage. It's Soki versus Stats. With these top-notch players, Soki, one of the best third players that we've ever seen, having a great run this year. This guy is a champion. Up against Stats, who has been the king of Outboxer. Excellent Protoss play on this map. Really knowing how to play it well. Showing some of the first island taking we've seen in expansions on this map. Really innovative. Loves his Sky Protoss in this matchup. And I think that's what we're going to be seeing out of him here in game one. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, going into this, Sulky must know that he's going to be up against most likely Sky Toss, unless Stats is going to go for some sort of all and go completely change the sort of meta shift on this map. It's going to be very interesting to see what these players come up with. Yeah, absolutely. Stats, a guy, you know, he's been practicing so much for this map. Even if he doesn't go for Sky Toss, I'm sure this guy has been practicing for so long for this one match here on Outboxer. It's his map. He's the guy on KT that plays Outboxer, and I'm really looking forward to see what he's going to bring out on this map. All right, guys. The sun has set during this intro. <laughs> Look at that water. Look at these lights. The mood could not be more perfect for these two teams to battle now. And I think we're going to take a shot at these two players. Or they'll take a shot of them camera-wise. I'm not going to Yeah, shoot. don't take a punch, dude. I'm not going to want to punch them in the face. I'm not actually going to like shoot a Nerf gun at them or anything like that. I would never. <laughs> Look at that trophy. It's actually spinning. That's like it's the coolest actually, thing I've ever seen. This is actually spinning. a symbol of esports right now. Look at this spinning trophy. Take a picture of this. On this floating island <laughs> in front of this crowd of fans who have loved these teams for over a decade. In their histories in StarCraft 1, making new history in StarCraft 2 right now. Look at that bone draws, look at the players like Flash, look at the players like Stats, look at the players like Sulky. Fantasy is here today. Yeah. And all right, let's talk about Sulky, our first third player here. He's in that booth getting warmed up. He's in the 100 wins club in Pro League, 111. He's 15 and 7 this season. And his end rate versus Protoss is a solid 3 and 4 in Pro League. He does get that sideways blue arrow. He is on a three-game losing streak. He was looking a little bit weaker, like a slight bit. But this guy, he had the biggest piece of the pie for SKT tied with Rain. He is one of their aces. They have relied on him so many times. They put him first to get the momentum. This is not by accident that they're putting him first. It's huge for him to be in that position. I want to point out his most recent games played. He lost to SLS and then lost to best of three against Zest. So... Two Protoss players, one of those was on Outboxer. Absolutely, now let's look at stats and stats here. 11 and eight, but six and three versus Zerg. And like I said, this guy is the king of Outboxer. He knows how to take islands, he knows how to hold them, he knows how to go sky toss, he's gonna take those islands, he's gonna get Tempest if he needs them in the late game. He's gonna have a ton of Phoenixes. He's ready for your Ultralist transition. He's ready for your mass corruptors. He's gonna make enough void rays to hold on. And look at this, Pro League fans of all ages here tonight. That crowd, that flash head! Hashtag dat flash head! You see T-Wine in there? As well as stats and zest and action in the back there as well. So funny. All right. Now I want to mention this again to anybody who was not here earlier. We actually have an observing PC today. Moonlight's got it. We do indeed, but man, is it going to be hard to micro this. With, yeah, the, uh, with the keyboard under the table, <laughs> it's going to be uh, a little bit tricky. I might have to put it in my lap or something. Well, thank God, Moonlight, you are a StarCraft II pro gamer. <laughs> and I'm so happy that you're the one who has control over this PC. Oh, thank you. Uh, don't worry, I'll make it work, guys. And we'll definitely get what we need from it. It says... The Han River, a strong wind, and Pro League. There actually is a strong wind tonight. Ow. You guys probably saw it during the interviews. The wind was blowing the players' hair around yeah. a lot. It's actually a typhoon, no joke, approaching Korea right now. <laughs> uh, it just feels so fitting that we get to feel that to those typhoon winds. Yeah, let me, let me tell you, I'm glad I got a haircut. Otherwise, it would be even <laughs> harder to cast these guys. All right, guys, predictions time for, the, for Team Salmon. Me and Mungle are going sulky. You're going with stats yeah. here. Me and uh, Dayon going for uh, stats here. The reason I vote for this guy, he is so good against Zerg. He plays against Zerg all the time and wins. This is his map. The one thing I feel that may go against him is that he's nervous. I feel like he doesn't have the quite the same amount of experience that Sulky does, but this guy, I would favor him in a regular match, and so I give him my my, my win here. He did beat Life 2-0 in Code A, then beat Rogue 2-0 in two PVZs, 
Encode to get out of his group in first place, and then in the playoffs beat True. On Overgrowth. On Overgrowth. He also beat Rogue on Overgrowth, which is Rogue's map pick in that best of three. Mm. This guy is a Zerg killer. Very good points, you know. That confidence you were talking about, that that experience in these high stake situations, I feel like Stats is actually more likely to get nervous. He's never really had a big finals in StarCraft 2. He's had a lot of important matches. He's won a lot of important matches. But I feel like Sulky with that experience is going to be stone, stone cold on his emotions. He's not going to break down. He's not going to get nervous. Exactly right. That's exactly why I voted for Sulky. He is so ready for this. He's has so much experience, and he's one of the most consistent Zergs, especially on SKT. So I, I am not surprised at all they put him out for this, and I think he can do very well, which is exactly why I went for him. All right, this is just so, so, so exciting, guys. I am, I'm like getting chills, like I'm shaking a little I, bit. I've had nonstop chills actually since this began. And this is no joke what I'm about to tell you guys. I have actually had dreams all throughout the season, like dreams, like as if I'm sleeping and I have a dream that one day we are going to have this matchup in the finals. I didn't know if it was going to be this season. I didn't know if it was going to be next season or years later. But I knew one day that dream was going to be a reality. And we're watching right now. Shulk over here has his GSL win pin. He's got that confidence here. But this is Stats' map. And that's what makes this all the more exciting. Soki confident enough to come out here, probably expecting to see stats. And that's another reason why I'm saying, you know, preparation going into this looking really strong for SKT. Yeah, absolutely right. This map is definitely not going to be easy for a Zerg, considering how easy it is to take the islands with the Protoss. And it's going into that Sky Toss. No doubt, Sulky is going to have a plan ready, either a timing attack, or he's going to go really into the late game and deal with the late game Protoss. But we're going to have to wait and see exactly what his plan is going to be. Yeah, we've seen Sulky as well. I, I've mentioned a lot how Stats is really good on this map, but Sulky as well. He plays a lot on this map as well. He has a lot of good strategies. I've seen him play late on this game with Broodlords even. I, I, you know, I'm going with Stats here, but Sulky is also a really big pick here. Yeah. All right. This is about to start. This is about to really happen. Sulky versus Stats. The map is loading. It's out, Boxer. Island map, Sky Toss is definitely in the style of stats, definitely what he's best at. And look at that trophy. The winning, the winning team will be taking that home along with all that money. The millions of one will be taken home, sent it straight to their bank accounts. There's so many prizes. There's a trophy as well, but I feel like the biggest thing on the line here is pride. It's the Telecom Wars, guys. This is another one here in the finals. This is also the final deciding moment to decide which one of these teams, SKT or KT, is really on top. Let's go into game number one here in the SPL Grand Finals. In the top left, the Zerg player for SK Telecom. It's Silky. Our most consistent Zergs we've had this year in all leagues. There's a shot of him. What a badass. Now over here at the bottom right in red for KT Roaster, the master of air toss and the king of outboxer. It's stats. Look at his face, man. You can see how nervous this guy is, actually. <laughs> Seeing that face, I, I made a prediction before, but that's a scary face to see when you're voting on stats. This yeah, guy is nervous. Absolutely, and why wouldn't you be? I mean, this is, this is everything to these guys. They have to win this tournament more than any other tournament, more than any solo league. They have to win this. They and we're starting to. with a pylon in base. It may very well be a gate expand here. Yeah, it starts to look that way. And we do have a drone scout, even you know, sending it out this early, there's that fear of a cannon rush. You've got to send it out there on a two-player map like this. The risk is just too high. He needs to get down there and see what's going on. And he's also going to see that gateway expand, most likely. It is going to be a, you know, a Nexus first here as well. So it he's got a few well different like options it. about what he wants to do here. He could even 
patch blocking, which is a, such a great idea, especially oh, on man. this map. I think it must be done. I so might do it. Is he going to do it? He's close. The probe will block the drone for now, but he can still get the hatch block off here. He's got to bring down that second probe. He does. He kind of lets his hatch get down. He's doing a really good job blocking it so far. Oh. And he gets the Nexus. Oh. Nicely placed. Back at home, the hatchery is up as well here for Sulky. So Nexus first versus Hatch first, going to be the openings. And there's that gateway as predicted Moonglade. Well That's said. Right. That's right. And we're going to see a second Hatch go down before spawning pool. So both players playing very greedy to begin with. Much like you said earlier, we might very well see a lot of macro games tonight. I actually think that's what we're going to see. I think there will be a lack of cheese. The stakes are actually so high in this tournament. If you have the balls to cheese, it's, it's, just, it's just too <laughs> risky, so man. much respect to you, sir, because, yeah, you, you want to make sure it's going to work on this match. Okay. We do have double hatch here now before spawning pool as well. There is a spawning pool placed down at 18 supply. Gases are being taken. Now, Moonglade, I want to ask you, because I'm feeling like we're going to see Stargate play. I right. think it's going to be an Oracle opening. What are your thoughts? I think I think it could be actually, I think, I, I think it's going to be Robo into Stargate, a very, very quick Stargate after a very, very quick warp prism to the island. That's the standard we've seen on this map time and time again. And I mean, if you go Robo into Stargate, there's simply no way, really, that the Zerg is going to take that island. Because when you have enough Phoenix out, you can shut down any Overlord drop, any sort of Mutalist play. No Nidus is going to No happen. Nidus is ever going to get down if there's more than, like, four probes. So, like, it just, it's just, it just makes sense. But we could see a change because Sulky will be expecting this. What he is this probe doing? Else. Where's that probe going? That probe is not in a normal location, guys. Pretty sneaky. That probe's at, like, a fifth base location over there. Yeah, this is very interesting. He knows the Overlord's not anywhere near him. We could see anything from this oh, point. Yeah. We could it's see a pile going point. down, guys. What are we going to see? I did not expect this. Oh, this is going to be Those exciting. Overlords, they're around the base. They were looking. They're getting out now because the Stalker is out. But they're going to be back. They're going to be looking, and Sulky's going to know. He's oh, going to be looking right. with it's the Zerg. The probe is trapped. The probe is trapped. The probe is trapped. <laughs> Straight from the beginning. So he actually... Oh, is it? Maybe not. It's really hard to say, it's actually. It's so hard to say. He, he may be trapped. He if he is, be. he can't make a second Stargate if that's his plan. That would be a huge mistake, but I think there might just be enough room here. Not moving the probe just yet, though. He doesn't want to make sure any Zerglings find it. Yeah, the Zergling comes in here now for the scout in the main. And is going to see no tech whatsoever, which is a yep. bit suspicious. And just like a Terran, when he comes in, like as if it's a Reaper, he sees that there's not enough pylons here. Maybe he's thinking, where, where is that extra pylon? What's going on here? Yeah, you know, if he comes up too and sees these gateways at the front, he might be thinking, oh, you're about to add five gates. You're going to maybe add two gates in the main or something. You're going to do an aggressive push. It's an Oracle. Now, he could also do the variation where he adds a bunch of gates here oh, and does a big attack off of a proxy actually, Stargate. That would actually be a perfect all in from this point, especially if this Oracle gets out without any scouting, gets to a mineral patch before there's any spore even started. There can be so much damage done, and the follow-up can be just a great all in. We see okay. an overlook go in. Yeah, he comes in here. He still sees no gates. He's going to be so confused right now. Start Spore Crawler's blind. SK crowd goes crazy. Yep, he's made the right choice here. But they're not ready yet. And with only one queen and no spores, this is sure to get about four or five probe kills here. Let's find out. Here he goes. The Oracle Beam is on. One, two, three, four. We're going to fifth. Not quite. Oh, he does oh, quite. He, he does get actually. He just he got does it. get a fifth. And he gets out alive. That Oracle is still alive. He's got those two gates at the front as well. He kills two of those Overlords there. And he's making a Void Raid behind this as well as the plus one. Yeah, we could definitely see a follow-up from this. Or we could just see an expand. No Robo, which kind of leads me to believe it could be a, a two-base all-in. All right, well, it could be the empty third base type of all-in as well. He has to at least show a Nexus. With no Nexus, it would be too obvious, right? It would be too obvious, for sure. I mean, this base is, a very, is, is very much a, a lot harder to hold than the island would be uh, from here. I mean, there are so many avenues to attack. It's such an open third base. Roach link timings can do a lot of damage, especially if they come out early enough. All right. Overlord speed coming out here. He really wants to know what's going on. And also, you know, keep in mind that we talked a lot about the islands for stats. It's much less likely we see Sulky take an island, but it has happened before. We have seen Zergs take that. We have seen them do that before. Yep. Never count them out with that Overlord speed coming down. No, absolutely not. Take that island. You get those mutas out, something like that. You control the map. 
Some of these Jerglings seem to get by, but uh, doesn't look like Soki's going for the front. He's just coming from behind. The Oracle should do a good job of warding those away. Yep, and now he's actually coming down here towards that base. 1-1 one, one upgrades are on the way. He's making 20 links right now. No roaches. There is there is just no roaches coming out. This is going to be very hard to hold. If, if he commits. If Stats commits a little bit, just a little bit, he can do some serious damage. But obviously, this is kind of just a pressure while he gets that third base up safely. Adding three more gates at the third base, blocking he's, in that cannon. He's got just such a safe setup in this third base as well, with those two zealots warped in there after those uh, lings he saw, and the cannon with that Sim City. Lings are not going to get anything done here. Not even going to try to catch that stalker. It's just not going to be worth it. Robo no. is coming up, and it looks like with this poke, he's just forced a lot of zerglings. Yep. Worker count. Can you take a look at that for me, Moonglade? Really curious to see where we're at right now. 70 to 64, so he did make a ton of links, but he droned up a lot before that, so he's still at a pretty healthy count. Yeah, absolutely. He's on very saturated three bases. No fourth base attempt at all so far. We're going to see three base, uh, three base foremost, and we've been seeing this actually more and more in recent meta. It's something that you, you don't normally think of because you, you, normally you want to have like eight gases to really get those uh, swarm hosts plus corruptors up in decent count. But uh, I think the last time I saw it was from Shine in uh, GSL, and it did a lot of work, and it caused a lot of upset, actually beating, I believe, Classic, yeah. who, who we'll be saying later tonight. Exactly. Uh, so that, that's a very valid point. Now, just taking a look at, at where we're at in this game, I want to mention that with this third base that Stats has gotten up so freely, he has about even supply with Sulky right now. It's 119 to 150. He actually passed him for a moment here. He's been macroing up like a boss, and that third base being completely uncontested means he's had so much six geyser mining on those assimilators. Let's give him the gas he needs to actually transition to the answer to this, which is going to be double Robo Colossi, most likely. He's got plus two and Blank nearly finished as well, and he's adding some cans at home. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, considering he's going this very gateway heavy style, Lucas are uh, going to do so much work against this. He's going to really have to retreat once he sees them, unless he can really commit. But I don't think with as many Zerglings on the map as well, he's going to have to be very careful and wait for those Colossi before he makes a move on the creep and before he can try and do any sort of damage to that fourth base. Stats, it just seems like walking out of the creep, trying to bring the army of the Zerg out there. But look at this, hold that thought. He's coming back here with some Zerglings, and there's only one cannon here. What does he have to defend here? Not he needs, much. Oh. He needs to turn that Oracle on. He needs to turn it on. It's killed a lot of probes here. Whoa, so many probes went down. About 10, 11 probes go down from that. Just yeah. from that, it's just simple harassment. Exactly. While Stats is walking around with his army, not getting anything done, only kind of stifling the creep slightly. Now, we did have a Zealot warping in the main, but he didn't seem to do a whole lot of damage. Uh, so that counter harassment definitely worth it there. He was really making use of that massive wave of Zerlings he made earlier. Now, this army is fairly weak here, but with the power of the Locust with its, on its side, you know, he has to be very careful. He's going to pick those roaches off and then walk out. Oh, uh -oh that Colossus is going to go down! Big mistake here by Stats. He loses such an expensive unit just like that. Really nice army control out of Sulky, and he's got units back here to stop the drop as well. He reset the Colossi can at this point in the game. This is a horrible thing. This is, is exactly not what Stats needs. He needs to get at least three, four Colossi up before he can even start pushing on the creep, before he can start getting rid of these Locusts. This is a horrible, horrible mistake. Now that phase mode cancel there does save his Zealot Warp in, but you know, again, no damage done there. And this is a lot of units now. With Mutalist support actually starting to join in here, he's got quite a few Mutas and Corruptors on the map. And with that puny Boy Ray count and a very lack of... Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Not not again! He's going to lose the glasses! He goes down! Oh. Zealot swing the party! And we talked about it before. We were talking about Stats' his nerves, man. He's going to lose a War Prism as well. He's in the War Prism, losing two Colossi for free. This is Soki's experience coming through here. And he's confident enough now to actually march across, force the camps on that fourth base, and he's going to root his units here, ready to start bringing some pressure onto the third. He is absolutely falling apart. He is. He must be so nervous to lose two Colossi to mass things like that. It is unheard of. It shouldn't happen. He should have his sentries with this uh, with his army with his colossi escorting them from this constant counter of attacks from zerglings big mistakes here and these if there was more if there was more swarm hosts we could actually see this third base go down from lucas alone all right well where are the locusts here there's actually a lot of charged zealots get her over here coming on this angle the void rays go into prismatic alignment mode those corruptors are out of position gotta say stats definitely taking the better fight here yeah definitely he's got to pull back with those zealots though and he does it's a good fight against all those Zerglings up there. The Roach is not doing too much work. 
Sulky not having that many Swarm hosts. He's only got five there. It's a small stream of these Locusts coming in at that third base. Just enough pressure. And Stats can be very happy about it. Losing all those Colossi earlier means he has barely any AoE damage to deal with this. Now he's going to try to take this base on this side. The Roaches are ready, but again, this huge Charged Zealot Force needs to be contested. He needs to have Locusts over there. Even with this many Roaches, there's just too many Corruptors, quite frankly, for this for this army. You know, it's good for fighting against those Colossi, but he's fighting against Pure Zealot Stalker. It's not going to be enough. Absolutely, and we just saw plus three finish for the Protoss, so these Zerglings and Roaches are going to go down even faster. Zerglings and two shots to Zealots, and this is a big problem. We are only seeing Hive Tech being upgraded now for Sulky. So he's going to have to be very, very careful with, with how his Zerglings engage. And he's kind of getting all over the place here. We're finally seeing an engagement. All right, Zealots out of position here. The Corruptor's going to take a good hard engage on these Colossi, targeting them down one by one here. Boyer at the back, just not enough by himself. to get this done? He will be targeted. He will go down those Colossi, not getting anything done against these Swarmos, these Locusts. But still, Stats holds. A brilliant hold here, in fact. He actually holds. There's just simply not enough Swarmos, I feel, in this, in this lineup to really do a lot of damage. Five is, is just not enough Locusts. I mean, if he had more with these Corruptors, he could be picking up every Colossi while the Lucas cleared the ground out completely. Zerglings and Roaches aren't doing it at all. And we're seeing a counterattack here with Mass Zealots. We're, yep. We've seen one really good thing out of Sulky. He's made like 10 spine crawlers at all these bases in total. He has a really, really good defense. So even though Stats was able to hold it off, Stats isn't really able to put any counter pressure on. He sends these Zealots to their death against a bunch of Roaches and Locusts. And they're going to have to run away. Yep, and that's a big investment in minerals he just dumped out there. Yeah, he's got plenty more back uh, in his bank. He's got 600 right now, but he's got to be very careful uh, with how he's using these zealots. He needs to use them positionally more than harassment-wise because, like you said, Brandon, with all that stack defense, it's a lot harder for him to actually get uh, that damage done. Absolutely, and I mean, <laughs> we do see the fourth base go up for the Protoss. I mean, Stats is in a really good position now. He's held off as much as he can, even after losing Colossi like he did. And now he's on even bases with Sulky. Sulky has to make something happen soon. All right, it looks like he's going to try to make it happen right now. Engaging on this Protoss army. Prismatic alignment goes down, but those Voidrus are so weak from the earlier fights. Is there enough Zerg ground army, though? Because he's killed all the Voidrus. He's going to kill his Colossi, but there's just too much stats on the ground. Or is there another wave of Locusts now coming across as well? I feel like the biggest mistake here has been just simply no targeting of the Colossi in these fights. So when the ground army, the ground army kind of just wipes, wipes up everything else and the Corruptors are getting focused down by this army as well. So the, I, I feel like he really needs to start resetting the Colossi account again while he has the tempo advantage. Making Roaches and Zerglings aren't going to do enough. I feel like we, if we saw maybe five more Swarmos, we could definitely see a much more powerful push. Well, I'm with you on that, Moonglade. Notice also the Adrenal Glands are actually getting close to being finished. It's going to give his Zerlings a lot more power on the ground as well. I love this Oracle, by the way. You know, he was, we were, the Observer was pointing out he's actually going across, picking off a lot of creep tumors. Yeah. yeah. It shows that even stats, even if he is really nervous in this point, he's still multitasking like a god. He's got even just that one Oracle doing damage somehow. Yeah. And I mean, look at the look at the creep spread. It is horrible right now. It is being completely severed. It's only just outside the third and fourth base. And this is uh, this is horrible for sort of pushing that Sulky needs. He is still on four bases. He needs to take a 50. He wants to kind of combat this army in the late game. Now, what's concerning to me is that stats doesn't yet have a third Stargate. Now, this is scary because there's a lot of different things that can happen. There could be a big switch to Mutas at any time in this late game. Also, he's not, he doesn't quite have enough Void Rays to really deal with the Corruptor count right now. We actually have a Mothership on the way as well here. We even have fireworks there going off in the even background. Even fireworks <laughs> happening in the background. I'm not even joking. Someone's having a fireworks show. What a perfect time to do it in the start of this the actually, Wars. This actually happened last time when Keller and I were casting the GSTL on the beach. Very similar feeling. This happened to be a fireworks show. It was really strange. <laughs> A lot of All these right. roots is getting picked off here. Not yeah. the best army control. There was a zealot there attacking at that fifth base that Sulky's trying to take as well. 11 Broodlords. That's pretty confident. That's, That's very like confident. saying, I know you don't have enough voids to deal with this. I, I kind of disagree. I mean, we have six with the army already. We have a mothership in the making. I mean, he's going to need hydras. He's going to need infestors. Or he's going to need so many corruptors to deal with this sort of army. All right. Stalkers over here. Trying to get some poking done. Moving back. He's just so careful with his positioning right now. Forcing a cancel on that uh, hatchery. A and very that's nice so move. Huge. So huge to get that fifth piece away from Sulky right now. 
And another massive thing to note at this moment in time, there is no Overseer with the army here. And we see a Mothership out. How is he going to fight this army? He can't. And he's going to be so out of position, he And there's lose nowhere everything. to run. When this happens, and your Brewlords are out of position like this, and you can't combat the Protoss army, then you're in big trouble, because Brewlords aren't going anywhere. No. Storm's almost done, plus two's nearly done, and the very first Stats Tempest is on the way. Second one queued as well. We all know Stats loves his Tempest. Well, here we go. The attack is coming in. The Voidry's moving into position, but the Corruptors run forward to protect the Broodlords. Broodlords getting to work on those gateways, and the probes are going to have to be pulled here for now. Probes pulled for now. And, and here we go. Here's the Mothership as well. And there's simply no detection. There's one Overseer at the back. Only one. He's going to give up the Nexus, though. He's just going to let it go. He's already gotten another base to the top right. And you know, to be honest, because of how slow this army is, I don't actually uh, disapprove of this choice. He just wants to make sure every engagement he takes is on his favor. Queen's here for transfuses now. And the Tempest have been shown. Looks like Stats is moving in. He may want to take a fight, but he's got to be so careful. The Big Overseer. Storm's going on the Corruptors as well. Even as Storm in this army, Stats has so many tools at his use right now, at his will to fight this army. All right. Finally makes another Overseer. We have two Overseers with the army now. And he's going to oh. camp the Stargates, picks off. One of these Tempests, but is it worth it? He's going to lose so many Corruptors in the process. And that's part of his you know, essential anti-air that he needs right now to kill that Mothership. Because killing the Mothership with Queens is just not really feasible. Killing it with Corruptors is another story entirely. Absolutely. And we have only 13 Corruptors on the map. 18 now. Some more just made, but not with the army. And here we go. We see an engagement here. But he's, he's running. He simply does not have enough. They turn around. All right, well, there go the storms on those Corruptors and the Prismatic Alignment now on the perfect moment. He's targeting with those Void Rams. This is not looking good for Sulky. He's dropping in supply like crazy. He's got no bank left. And it looks like Stats is poised to take game number one here. Brennan, I guess you were right, man. He is the king of this matchup on this map. He's played this so well. He let that third base fall. He knew he had enough time. He knew he had another base. And he waited. He waited so long until he just had the right amount of Tempest. A big mistake by Silicon. They lose a lot of those Corruptors as well. He wasn't able to take down the Mothership, uh, mothership, core, uh, mothership rather quick enough. And now Stats is right on the front doorstep. And Silky has nothing to defend here. He's got nothing. KT and Fort Rolster fans rejoice here as Stats' army just destroys everything in its path, annihilates his creep, sends just a few stalkers over here to deal with this queen. That's enough to deal with that. And here we go, Prismatic oh. Alignment engaged. Way too many stalkers on the ground, and Sulky can't believe it. There he is. can't accept it. There is absolutely nothing he can do. Down 70, 80 supply, over 100 now. Uh, you can't beat this army. He made the wrong combination. GG! Stats does it. He takes game number one against Sulky somehow, some way. Sulky, a huge ace for SKT, and he goes down to this guy. Very well played. Very, very well played. KT Rolster crowd is going crazy right now. You guys will probably get a shot of that in a second. Waving their banners and screaming. They're not about the boomsticks, they're about the light show tonight. Even the fireworks going off as Stats takes this victory. Yes. And what a victory. What some critical mistakes from Sulky, I feel, going into simply cutting out too many swarm hosts. Five, not going to do too much. Yeah, it just wasn't quite enough to get anything done. And I mean, catching those Colossi so early as well, if he applied more pressure with swarm hosts, with more corruptors, less circlings, less roaches especially, he could have really made something of it. Definitely so. Well, a very fiery start to this series right now. And the world is wondering who is going to take the next match. The next match is the map that everybody has been waiting for. Flash versus Parting. These two guys duking it out in a PBT. What more could you ask for? What more could you ask for? You actually cannot ask for more. There is no more to give. It's all here tonight, boys. It actually feels like it was rigged for Flash versus Parting, because it just had to happen. I can't believe it actually has happening. And on such an interesting map, merry-go-round as well. Yeah. I have to, I have to imagine Parting is coming out with something very, very interesting for this match. I remember a certain game very early on, Flash versus Parting. Parting demolished. 
Flash. It was one-sided. And you know what? I feel like Flash has that in his heart still. He's practiced so much for this one matchup. He's going to be so ready to take down Parting. But can he? That's the big question. He's, I don't he, know. I, he's been fiending for this payback, I feel, ever since the, uh, the show that Parting put on after his victory. Embarrassed Flash in front of everyone. And Flash has just been waiting for his chance. And what better chance than to take it here on the stage of the Grand Finals and really put him to shame. And man, I hope we see a show from Flash afterwards as well. No matter who wins, man, this is definitely going to be the, like, I mean, this is going to be the most exciting match today of our preset matches. This is the one that's going to set the momentum, I feel. Yes, Stats already has the first win, but if Parting takes down Flash, the most famous person in this area right now, I'm not just talking about in this, in this finals venue, talking about in the surrounding area, like the miles and kilometers around, man. This guy is the biggest, the bestest, the hero of StarCraft II, the, the icon of StarCraft. And if he's able to defeat him and take it to that 1-1, I feel like the momentum swings heavily back into SKT's favor. I would agree. I, I feel like especially with parting, I, I would be not surprised if he comes out and plays a huge ceremony as well. Something like this, if he takes that win, Good look at stats in that doll there. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be this is going to be such a great match. I, I'm really looking forward to this one. I mean, so such a rivalry already. It really is, man. All right, Oob looking stressed. Oob's looked stressed all day. It's almost like that that rumor, that that feeling, that idea of that like SKT is supposed to win, but. Everyone's thinking that an upset is like in the, it's like this floating idea, this floating feeling that's going to go around. Every single Korean I've spoken to today regarding the finals, and I've probably talked to 10 or 15, and I'm talking about personalities, I'm talking about coaches, I'm talking about, we're talking to Song Tech, you know, I'm talking to Jin Air Coach, I'm talking to the casters, and I'm talking to everybody, everyone's saying, you know, SKT should likely win, but already, KT takes the first win, and that, that sentiment, that feel of there may be an upset today has got to be so terrifying right now for that, for, for Oof, for that SKT coach who has to now sit here and watch as these two players duke it out.